Hello guys and welcome to a new Star Division 2 video today by myself Vulcan and Attack Power. Hey everyone, Attack Power here. In this video we have for you game 3 of a best of 5 between Yamin and Mamil in the grand final of the Division 1 Season 10 playoffs of the Star Division 2 League. Today they are playing on Orsha East and are now left in the red team. Playing on the allied side we have Yamin using the second New Zealand with the Maverick deployment type. And on our right in the blue team, playing on the Axis side, we have Mamil using the Pansari Divisiona with the Vanguard deployment type. So currently, Yamin 2 0 up. If Yamin takes another game, he will be the champion of the Sir Division League Season 10. Uh, but what do you have to say about these divisions, Attack Power? First off, yay, non mirror income. Always exciting. I do think Maverick's a pretty solid counter to Vanguard because basically you end up with more points. The only time it ever evens out is literally the end of the game. So I think Maverick is a nice counter to Vanguard in general. These divisions, I mean, two solid ones. We've seen a lot of Pansati this uh, this season. A uh, great mix of light armor and stuff, T26 spam, and then your Yaakadis absolutely dominate any CQC at all. Um, yeah, just a, it's a it's a solid division, a great air force. Uh, second New Zealand, great Commonwealth division, some unique and strong infantry backed up by a whole bunch of Shermans and such. And then usually a, a strong Air Force, but uh, Yaman only bringing in one card of Boston's and some recon. Uh, really kind of odd, actually. Um, both these players really light on artillery. Uh, they barely got any at all. Relatively light on AA. I, definitely some interesting builds. Really focused on basically tanks and infantry. It's going to be a right infantry brawl then. Uh, let's have a quick look at what's going down. Yamin here on the top left. He's got the Staghound Mark II, uh, Diggers, and the Oblites. Uh, then we have, or Oplites, I guess they're thankfully. Oplites, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> then we've got the Achiomaticos. Oh, gosh. Uh, the Greek names, <laughs> man. The Staghound, the Standout MG. We've got uh, the Casadromis with the Mari, the Oplites, and a Carrier 50. Recon with the Bofors and uh, another Staghound 2 there as well. On the very bottom side, it's going to be the Staghound Mark 1, Mark 2, and 2 Amari. On the top right for Mamil, as we get underway, we have the T28E and the T26. There's a BAFC, which is a BA10M, basically moving ahead with the Yakari, Kovari, and the Lati. He's got a Brewster out to the start with the G50. There's also a Brewster on the bottom side as well. I guess expecting some aircraft out of Yamin. Uh, but into the center, he's got the Yakari, Kiavari, uh, and Maxim, and the Lati with the Sturmi following up. There's going to be some Suxi Pioneeri, the Yakari, Kiavari, and the T26. On the bottom side, it's going to be the Klimi with the Taka Ampoya, Lati, and Yakari, Kiavari. Not much in the middle for Mimil, and uh, I'm surprised about this <laughs> investment in Brewsters at the start of the game. Yeah, these wouldn't be that great even if there were planes. I'm not sure why he put 100 points into these. Um, kind of odd, too, that he's bringing the Lattes in th his Ford AAs. I thought they had, like, a, a something else to come in. Kind of weird. I think it might be because it's Pansari and not the Rishma, which we're used to. They don't They don't even have a Kubel or something? Seems weird. I'm sure it might be a deck uh, misbuild or something like that. Yeah, a little odd, but eh, what are you going to do? Uh, machine gun losing to the double MG42 in the center. That really had no chance at all. Uh, he does get the Norse for free, Mamil, so he's got a nice early 1410 with a flag down south as well. Pretty good in terms of flag grab early. Yeah, it looks like Yamin, yeah, like you said, didn't contest the top side at all, which is uh, rare. Uh, but then again, Mamil, you know, barely put anything in the middle. So it's really up to Yamin to identify that there's not much there and uh, start pushing on as the Brewsters come in for some strafing runs onto the transports but one of them getting very low already to the Bofors 40 on the back side. Uh, meanwhile on the bottom the Staghound with the machine gun making short work of the Kivari in the building there. Taka Ampuya trying to keep back the Mari on the bottom side. Yeah the uh it's really just a KV-1 right down south should hold the line pretty well it's got some nice armor on it. Uh, I will say one of my favorite tanks in the game, the T-28E. Love this thing. Quadru uh, triple DT machine gun with an okay gun for only 35 points and 7 millimeters of armor. Hard to beat. T-28, 
It does have a really nice uh, amount of HG on its gun, and yeah, triple machine gun. It can rip through infantry in the right scenarios. It's actually pretty nice. This digger is actually in trouble as it does get pinned down here. It looks like Mamil realized there isn't really much to defend on this side. He might be finding himself a 15-9 early on. Yeah, that would definitely be huge. Although, again, if Yaman finds out how light he is in the center, that will be a disaster for sure. So Mamil here really needing to win this game and he'll be trying his absolute hardest to try and stay in this series we've got more t26s on the way a bafc another t28e on the way so reinforcements now coming in to fix that disparity of units in the center of the map yeah the issue is uh we will probably gonna lose these two flags in the southern south or at least one flag he will lose one flag here in the center south Although these Yarkardi in a nice position behind the building, the only way he'll dig them out is by going and fighting them. The Yarkardi do wonderfully at that range. Uh, down south, Staghound going to pick on those Yarkardi there. Uh, let's see if he can grab both these flags up north, though. That's pretty key here. Spitfire going after the recon plane. Roosters are gone. Although I'm not sure how well they'd do against the Spitfire anyway. Yeah, they'd be way too slow after the Spitfire. But the Dickers... Yeah, falling back, more infantry coming in here to try and deal with the Yarkadi that have managed to get really far up. In the center, meanwhile, Yaman actually being forced back. So this is looking pretty dire, actually, for Yaman at the moment, I would say, as the Stackhound also gets killed off on the bottom side by the KV-1. So, like, overall, Mamel starting off strong. Yeah, I mean... T26s are extremely obnoxious. Uh, they're actually, like, kind of almost criminally undercosted. Uh, only 15 points to get an armored unit with a gun that can kill things way more expensive of it than it is. They're, they're really nuts, honestly. Yeah, the T26s are very nice. And uh, can really, yeah, kill a lot of medium tanks with that 75 mils of penetration. It's just it's very, very nice. Um, meanwhile, in the center, though, Sturmy Ooh. going down to the Sherman 3. Very nicely done. Yeah, it was the, the Staghound and the Sherman kind of double teamed it and, and did a nice job getting the side shots. BA-10 now going to go out. Staghound's doing so much damage right now. A nice micro here from Yamin. And we'll likely get another shot into this BA-10M before it can turn its turret because that thing turns it very slowly indeed. Does find the kill. Very nicely done. Now the T26 is trying to help the Kavari make ground towards this flag. Once they do get within range, the flames will land in their face. So that won't be very fun. Nice uh, transport snipe by the Sherman 3 onto an infantry squad that was going deep on the top side. But uh, Mimil still holding on to those flags. Not quite a 15-9. Looks like Yamin has managed to avoid that for the time being. Yeah, uh, Mimil got to get back into this little complex down south to grab that flag there. Um, the Shermans do counter the T-26s pretty well, though. They can easily kill them and, of course, can bounce shells and things quite well. Surprised he called in the Kavadi in the middle instead of a Yaakadi, because obviously the Yaakadi are a little bit stronger once they get up close here. Although keeping just out of the range of the Katadramas Flamer, which is pretty strong. It's pretty great, actually, although Yaman looking for a flag here in this miniature town below the center town. It's really up to Yamin to use the smokes here to get on top of that Kavadi, so it can't just sit there at that range and use its Suomi to get the job done. We've got a J87 now coming in for the Sherman 3 so that he can allow his T28s and T26s to get back in the fight. Not have to worry too much. That is going to get its full strike off, but misses. Ooh. Unfortunate. And he did lose this northern flag now. Um... He needs a longer range piece of armor down here to like push off the Sherman and then allow his, you know, T28 to go pick on some infantry again. Yeah, the bottom side, the T26s can probably just move up to capture that flag. That will put Mamil oh, yeah. on the 15-9. And I think right now what Mamil really needs to be doing is like capitalizing on his on his map position and really just start putting the pressure on, on, on Yamin. Uh, as quickly as possible because if he allows Yamin to like recover a little bit then he's going to have a real fight on his hands yeah he was doing so well of actually really making progress and then kind of sputtered out as he started to take more a more defensive approach to like hold the ground he grabbed 
Uh, and it's kind of starting to nip him in the butt a little bit. Losing hit one of his T20s, he just finally kills that pesky, uh, that pesky staghound that was really doing a lot of damage. But now he lost this center flag, which is just one more thing he's going to have to fix. Boston does get through the ITPSV. Yep, we're going to see that. do a lot of damage. Hit the tank in Toyota and the Yagari. Killed the tank in Toyota outright. Very, very nice indeed. And uh, now the Cadromis. Uh, gonna have to push off the Kavadi, but the six pounder getting shots into the Sturmy there, and the Spitfire meanwhile takes out the G50. So, some really, really good kills coming through here from Yamin. Really starting to catch up after the start of this game, and that is really not good news for Mamil. Yeah, and, and Mamil's just like, he's got this fly. All he has to do is drive this T28 up. T26, excuse me. Like, I mean, I know he might be thinking there's something in this building, but the the line is too close for something to be in that building. So I'm surprised he hasn't just gone grab that. T28E in the center goes down to, oh, the 57 mil. Yeah, the it's other thing there. we've got to remember is second New Zealand really doesn't have that many Piats uh, for a no. Commonwealth division. Uh, only the diggers with Piat actually have Piats. Like all the rest of the infantry that we've seen on the map, uh, like the Maori, the Oblites, the uh, Kaisers Romis, no, none of those have AT. Uh, even the, the leaders that Yaman is using don't have AT. So uh, that T26 is pretty safe there uh, to take free flags. Yeah, the T26 actually just killed a Sherman, talking about up trading. Um, that's, nice. that's what m makes them so fabulous. Uh, but yeah, in the center, things are starting to fall apart a little bit here for Mimiel. Uh He's not holding, he doesn't have much left if we really look. The uh, one and only ISU-152 coming out for the mill now. Trying to reinforce the center. We'll be able to fire position that down the road to really secure those infantry engagements into that town. But yeah, things getting back to a 12-12 to a 12 to 12 briefly, now back to a 14-10. Just shows how sort of volatile Mamil's situation really is right now um, as he is diving deep on the bottom side with the T-26 and the KV-1. Yeah, and that's a good idea. That's what you can do with these C26s. I mean, it's only 15 points, so to capture a whole flag for 15 points, even for 30 seconds, is really helpful, honestly. Yep, the Sherman 3 coming around the corner, though, will help deal with that, unless he's a little bit worried about other infantry in the area, but no, get, manages to get line of sight just about. And the diggers with the Piat take out the KV-1. Slow clap for that Piat actually doing it. Yeah, he got the kill. P28 in the middle with the T26. These have a chance. They, I mean, there's nothing here to kill them. The Digger Piot, I guess, definitely could kill those. Uh, but, I mean, he, he really needs to get some infantry in here to recapture some of these things. I'm not a huge fan of this positioning of the ISU 152. I would have thought, you know, obviously up north, he could have really used this extra long range firepower. Yeah. And there's been some interesting things like the Lati on the top side here, the very top. We were all trying to sneak that through to the reinforcing road. And that was being really annoying for Yamin to try to deal with. He's currently trying to strafe it constantly with the Spitfire. It does take out another Lati in the meantime there as well. So at least kind of securing his back line. I'm sure the Spitfire will come around for another run there and finish it off. Uh, but yeah, things definitely, you know, coming back to the 50-50 now. Uh, the ISU-152, as you mentioned, is in a bit of a weird spot because he's already got the majority of the ground in the centre uh, and won't really give that much more value unless he can get it to the edge of the hill and start you know, real, really hitting uh, Yamin from range. Yeah, and like you can't really utilise the 2k range of it, which is something that 2nd New Zealand kind of struggles to kill. I mean, it's got the 17-pounders, but... That's it. Like, other than that, there's no 2K anything to kill it. So it, it's just an odd usage of that because it could have really done a lot of damage up north. But now this little squad of armor from Yaman now pushing down south into the center. And that's going to be it's going to be a tough pile of units to deal with. Yep, the double Wolverine Sherman 3 on its way to the center there. Uh, meanwhile, on the bottom side, the Maori doing a great job with the diggers of keeping the Yakari out of these buildings and uh, every time they're coming across the open there the Yakari just get absolutely toasted but the uh, JU87 is going to be able to get another cluster strike off this time it will successfully find the kill uh, but the Spitfire right on its tail yeah these recon Spitfires are wonderful 
Like, they're so great. They can shoot things down. They don't have much ammo, but they don't need much ammo. They're 95 points. They're cheaper than your average fighter. They're still super fast, and they have recon. It's an amazing unit. So we've just moved into phase B, and uh, this time around, we can actually talk about the fact that Yamin now has the 170 points of income against the 125 of the Vanguard of Mamil. So this is where Yamin really wants to try and make a comeback. Um, as he keeps getting those juicy ticks and uh, up to like the 20 minute mark and beyond the 20 minute mark for a while actually uh, Yamin will start to get a decent advantage in points and with all the trades that he's got so far I feel like Yamin's in actually a pretty comfortable position as he continues to engage this armor on the top side yeah I just uh, you end up with a 200 point advantage as Maverick at the end of B phase uh, against Vanguard, which is why I think it's a very good counter uh, to it. The Shermie, the Sherman 3 breaking off combat with the Shermie, both got a penetration. ISU-152 does erase a Maori, so, I mean, it's not like it's not getting used, which is good. Yep, and it's uh, being followed up by the T-26, the KV-1, the Shermie, just all engaging Lots of different units here making actually decent progress. That Sherman 3 having to come up the ridge there to engage all of this, these units is really risky for it because it, it they might get caused by the uh, gun depression. <laughs> well, also, you can say it. You know you want to say it. It's hill pression. <laughs> I'm not going to say hill pression. I'm sorry. Hill pression. I would never it's hill say pression. It. it makes more sense. It is the best term ever and it should be used. KV1. Gets penned by that six pounder. Yeah, it's not good, but it does bounce next one. Sherman three coming though. All those Sherman has moved up to save it. Sherman does bounce off the Sherman. KB one down. Sherman three down. Ah. <laughs> the Sturmy gonna back off as the six pounder is gonna manage to get another shot off, but misses. Misses <laughs> from that oh, range. No. Another Sturmy surely. One still. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, the six pounder. Finding the kill onto the Sturmy with one health left. One health AT guns, man. They OP. So powerful. <laughs> it's always been a thing in Stone Division. It really has. Well, I don't understand why, because, like, infantry reload slower when they have lower health. Why don't AT guns reload slower when they have lower health? Wait, do they? They do, yeah. If you, if you never notice, like, low health infantry take forever to reload. Yeah, then maybe they should do it with AT guns, that would make sense. Yeah. <laughs> Considering it's like one dude, like... <laughs> yeah, clearly it's capable of doing that. Like, clearly it's in the, the programming. It's in the coding, so why why don't AT guns shoot slower? That is actually very interesting. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I saw it on a Discord somewhere. They were like, you know, how do they balance infantry getting weaker? Well, they actually just reload slower. They do the same amount of damage, but they reload slower. Never knew that. No, I, I never knew that. That's uh, that's a new one for me. Yeah, I mean, I mean, commenters can tell me I'm wrong. I might be, but I, I'm pretty sure someone smart read that. I think it was Gonzo. I, I think I saw Gonzo saying that. Yeah, we'll have to leave it in the hands of the comments. But uh, meanwhile, the Yakari getting quite far up here. Do you find a stack count kill with their uh, Panzer Ooh. Faust? Meanwhile, ISU 152 killing off one of the Wolverines in one shot. Other Wolverine getting on target. ISU trying to reload. Yeah. I'm surprised the Wolverines don't just commit there because the ISU 152 takes so long to reload. Yeah, it's kind of odd. And it's like the only one that he has, so like you'd want to get rid of it ASAP. But the two-inch mortar carrier going to be trying to stress it out. And the Wolverine misses his shot. Oh no. Oh, okay. Let's let's just say it here. Thirty percent accuracy versus 45 percent accuracy okay sure sure at, at sure. that range the, the think... wolverines missed two times and the isu missed yeah, no time yeah i mean the isu basically has almost 100 percent. well both of them almost have 100 percent accuracy oh. but i think with the wolverine it's like it was on the move it still had the movement penalty In conspiracy <laughs> i think that's that's the only explanation <laughs> that i can come up with is that the m10 hadn't fully stopped when it fired or ISU 152s have a secret super buff to their their accuracy. That's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mamil actually coming in pretty strong right now, especially considering he's not the one with the Maverick income. Um, no. He's doing extremely well throughout this phase so far, getting plenty of kills. I guess he's technically capitalizing 
on his uh, phase A income at this point. So, yeah, getting a lot of work done. Yeah, we're pretty deep. Now, the nice thing about Pansati is your stuff is really cheap. Remember, all the infantry are 20 points. You're spamming T26s, which are 15 points. So you can still get a lot of troops out in these later phases. Although he is starting to lose up north, which is going to be a big loss. Uh, it's going to be, two, you know, these two flags here. It's going to make it hard to develop, although he is doing quite well in the center. And pushing him off this hill is huge. A T26, BA10M trying to shoot this Wolverine. We'll have a reasonable amount of penetration, I think, up to that Wolverine at that range. But, uh, yeah, nicely done by Yamin to get behind the Yakari and the Kivari uh, in order to secure those two flags. Uh, really, he did this towards the start of the game as well, where he just kind of constantly stopping Mill from really getting full value out of his pushes. Yeah, and that's just something Yaman does masterfully. I mean, it's every time you play him, you think things are going well, and then all of a sudden you're down a thousand points. And it's like, wait, wait when did that happen? Oh, nice double oh. kill there from the ISU-152. Yeah. Takes out two MG squads in one shot. A little bit of a mistake from Yaman, honestly, having both of those so close together. Uh, but yeah, on the top side, more reinforcements trying to come in, but one of them got hit killed in its transport. The stag count now arriving there, multiple field engineers coming in to back that up. But uh, yeah, getting back onto this center hill with these Shermans is going to be really, really difficult because every time he comes up the hill, he's going to have gun depression problems. <laughs> you can resist all you want. The thing is, all... <laughs> thing is the only thing facing him are t26s and ba10s which oh, means well there goes German another one just, yep well i had to open my mouth again right <laughs> t26 fighting the side show as it comes up well this is what i was saying t26s are kind of criminally undercosted. 15 points they're killing shermans i mean that's kind of gross looks like yeah i managed to sneak in a flag back on the bottom side as he kills the yakari now fire positioning next to the other yakari oh yeah and you're a god such a good play. <laughs> the digger's now going to be able to move up here and just surrender the Yakari without the Yakari being able to use their uber close range ability. That is so dirty. It is very dirty. I would have, I would never think to do that. Wolverine max range killed from the ISU 152. No, there's <laughs> definitely nothing. Stop. There's nothing suspicious here at all. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I, I'll give you that one. That one was definitely. <laughs> Uh, a bit sus, you know, but... <laughs> <laughs> it's pile of, the evidence is piling up. <laughs> Two T26s taken out by the Sherman, though. Nice kills there for Yaman. Definitely clears out some of this armor spam. Uh, we see more t 26 I mean, Mamil is committed to only calling in T26s. I gotta give him credit. Yeah, he does have a lot of them. <laughs> Even more in Phase C, and we've just moved into Phase C. <laughs> so more T26s gonna be on the way, and plenty of them popping out of the spawn. And I'm, I'm kind of actually surprised that he hasn't called in his T-3045s because those are fantastic against Shermans. Like, they really shred through them easily. I think it's just maybe because of the range. Um, it's just a bit awkward to, to use them here. And you can kind of do the same at this range with the T-26, especially if you have, like, enough of them that you can constantly side shot stuff coming up this hill, which he has managed to do quite uh, successfully so far. But we are currently sitting on a... 12-12, Mimil well ahead in tickets, uh, has done pretty well with his aggression so far, uh, but he's going to have to to keep an eye on things because this uh, top side of the town in the center is pretty precarious and would put Yamin ahead on flags. Yeah, I don't think I don't think Mimil is going to be able to get back into the north anymore, uh, especially with their lower income. Although Mimil continuing to commit singular pieces of armor to the north, kind of odd. I'm not sure what he expects to get done with those single pieces of armor. Austin now coming in for a bombing strike actually onto the AA itself. Uh, will actually get the bombs off. The 40 oh. mil reloaded just at the wrong time there. Might still manage to shoot down the Boston. Because those bombs did not pin it down. Mm, no Stavaki though forced off. The field engineers will probably kill this 40 mil both or... Gosh, that Boston, very, very lucky there, especially with the IT P PSV in the middle, uh, getting some shots on target. But yeah, Yaman on the bottom side, getting his infantry really far up right now. A couple Sherman 3s kind of just idle here, it feels like, uh, not doing too much to support that push. But uh, yeah, they're making decent ground, and 
And the T26s aren't really going to be <laughs> causing much problems uh, for that infantry for the time being. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of surprised at the T26 calling down south. They're, this is not a good place for them. It's too open. I mean, the Shermans should absolutely dominate them. I would think you'd call in, this is where a T3045 would do quite well. Yeah, absolutely, yeah. The T-34 on this bottom side would be really, really nice right now. The Sherman 3 is now moving up onto the ridge to deal with that 40 mil AA. And uh, the 17-pounders has been taking pot shots from the ridge uh, towards these BA-10Ms in the center. Uh, we do see Mamil looking to peak the edge with the T-28 here. He's got to be really careful because Yamin set up a bunch of these 17-pounders on the edge of this ridge making absolute death trap for Mamil if should he choose to try and push off there. Yeah, great thing to note for... I, I've never used this ridge before, and I definitely should. This is a great way to get back onto this ridge if you lose it. Yeah, it does have uh, a decent amount of places where there's 2,000 meter range uh, engagement ranges, and he's shooting currently now at the ISU-152 with that 2 vet 17 pounder. It gets a pounce. <laughs> <laughs> it missed the first shot, second shot was bounced, third shot finds the kill. The ISU-152 is going to finally fall. Legend is done. Yeah, definitely, definitely interesting. And once again, we see Yaman with a commander as well. Something to take note of here. Yep. Always likes his uh, venerate seal, though. There's not, like, too many leaders exploiting that right now. Uh, engineers. Lunch, yeah. The engineers... Uh, on the top side kind of being killed off by the Arcadi at range couldn't get really use their TNT. The engineers, the field engineers are actually pretty nice I think because they can oh, yeah. uh, trade for 15 points for quite well but they do need to get within that 100 meter range in order to capitalize on that. Boston is going to be coming in with its bombing strikes to try and kill that Arcadi. Only does two damage. It'll take quite a lot of damage itself before it heads back to base. It'll take a while for that to come back on the field. Yeah, field engineers are great. 15 points, they're basically like a suicide squad. Um, and you get 18 of them in B phase. So they're so easy to spam all over the map. Uh, we do see a recon plane going down once again to the Spitfire. So uh, more of that recon loss there. Nostavaki in the little southern town goes down to the Sherman 3. And that flag flips. And Yaman picks up his 1311 to start, try to start to chip away at Mamil's lead here. Yeah, so currently... Yamin, yeah, plenty of time to get his tickets ahead if he keeps the 1311. But Mimil has built up a very nice lead here. If he can somehow Ooh. get some of these flags back and delay the game, that'd be great. ITPSV gets spotted by the Sherman, takes a penetration, should get out in time though. Sturmy trying to fix that problem as soon as it can. Sturmy should win this. It does have the penetration of Varshaw takes a side shot from the 17 pounder though that 17 pounder position is absolutely disgusting and oh does God. manage to <laughs> kill him off as well beautiful stuff Sherman 3 is going to survive and now probably just support the Maori uh, next to them in order to deal with these Yakari yeah what a play I mean that's that's massive because that Sturmy was basically holding off these two Shermans these T26s in like straight up fight against the Sherman have no chance so, once again, these, this position on this ridge is fascinating. I've never seen it used, and it's really, really strong. Up north, uh, Mimil trying to poke his way back into the woods here. Did kill off the Staghound, and surprisingly, Yaman's brought no AT here. So this T-28 is kind of getting to do whatever it wants at the moment. The six-pounder is now coming in. It's going to be a bit late to the party because the Nostavaki are arriving, and they will have those Molotovs in order to put some pressure on at close range but Sherman 3 actually going down here um, in the middle to I think what the T26 I guess it would have been or the BA-10M maybe the T28 it, even yeah I think it might have been the T28 but we just saw another BA-10 go down to these 17 pounders yeah just doing so well but yeah I'm shocked when Mille's gonna get back into this northern forest I thought that would be basically impossible Staghound I mean yeah Staghound going after the T26 should kill it pretty easily well unless it misses just kidding and now the T26 uh, going to be able to get some shots on target. And it's pretty much just a dice roll now. Who's going to get the shot on first? Wow. T26 finds the job and uh, finds the shot. And uh, Nostavaki, meanwhile, take out the uplights and the remainder of these low health infantry squads on the top side. Field engineers are going to probably want to back off for the time being. Capitalize on their HE at close range. 
Yaman's still on a 13 level, though, because he made a big breakthrough down south now instead. Only three infantry. It's not like he's got a huge force here, but there wasn't much here for Mimil either. And now Yaman on the 1410. Yeah, that Yakali is a bit annoying for those infantry to deal with, but Spitfire coming in there with the strafing run certainly helps things out. Shermie doesn't want to get close to these diggers, otherwise can help deal with that. Now more infantry coming in for Mimil on the bottom side. Yakari, Nostavaki, some Taka and Puya even left in his deck. Mamil now actually investing in a 150mm artillery piece as well. Not sure how long that's been on the field, but that's now firing at the Bofors. Could also be used to help uh, deal with some of these 17 pounders on the ridge. It happens to kill the Maori next to the 40 mil. That poor that poor person <laughs> just in the wrong place at the wrong time. He's had the 150 for a while, actually. He's let it sit for a little bit too long, I would say. Could have used it sooner. Up north, the six pounder finally in positions, hitting that T26. But the T28 did get into the woods safely, so for now it is safe in the machine gun finding that six pounder. These infantry doing quite well. I mean, the field engineers are going to struggle against the Molotovs of these units, but once those units run out of Molotovs, they'll be pretty easily killed. Yeah, things currently swinging backwards and forwards quite a lot across the map. You know, we see uh, Yamin make ground on the bottom side, and then we have like uh, Mimil then take ground on the top side. Free field engineer kill there for the mill with his T28 on the top and the bombing strike actually going to miss from the Blenheim onto the six pounder. Yeah, and uh, the Spitfire recon finally went down to the AA of Mamil here. Although his infantry down south letting his Yakari kind of get caught out here again and losing those. He really doesn't want to lose those. He doesn't, I don't think he actually probably, has, I mean, I guess he has a sea face card, so he's probably got a good few left, but he, he needs his infantry to actually get into the woods. Yeah, and uh, the Maori currently just sitting there causing problems six pounder attack moving forwards on this bottom side uh, will eventually get line of sight on the road but yeah the Mali do not want to sit there taking shots from the Sturmi uh, meanwhile in the middle Nostovaki going down we've got the Yakari again getting caught out at range by the Mali and the Sherman 3 uh, Oplites flooding in from Yamin. Six pounder actually died on the top side before it could deal with the T28. That's actually pretty big because that T28 is pretty much uncontested there now. Look at all the machine guns. Oh, it's so cool watching that thing shoot. Yeah, the Oplites and Diggers don't have much of a chance here in the woods against the Nosovaki and Yakari. Unless, I mean, they are at four health, so they, they might just be able to overwhelm them just by the fatness of their squads. Takam, uh, Takin Torunta, though, takes out a transport on the hill in the center. Nice kill there. Uh, that talking Torunto could kill off some of this armor here too if he could get line of sight, although it's kind of weird uh, hill line of sight right now. Boston getting hit by the ITPSV, but does get its bombs off just fine. Uh, bombs hit those infantry, but it doesn't do a ton of damage to the T28. Yeah, it has caused it stress though, and it's going to allow the six pounder to pretty much freely kill that off, oh, I think. Uh, the Oplites and Diggers get wrecked. Yep, nice double Molotov there, pinned them down very fast indeed and uh, surrendered them. But the T28, now dead, is going to allow the Oplites there to start pushing back up. Uh, surrender's actually everywhere across the map right now. Yeah. Uh, but Mamil finding a 13-11, which is good, because he's just going to want to keep piling on the pressure on Yamin, keep ahead on tickets whilst taking away tickets from his opponent, especially since there's only 20 minutes left on the clock. Yeah, and we're rooting for, for Mamil because I want to see a game four between these amazing players. Absolutely, yeah, of course. Tank and Yunta now moving up to support the Yakari. Uh, but there's Yakari probably going to yep, go down. Tank and Yunta going to want to get in range with that Panzer Shrek and find the kill. Dickers, meanwhile, dealing with the Nostavaki quite nicely uh, from that flag. And one, this is actually one thing that uh, we should probably mention for newer players. Um, we can see here Yamin purposefully not using auto cover. So he can sit behind the building and freely capture that flag without being able to be shot at from range. Very, very helpful tip. You can do that in your rules of engagement on the right hand side. Yeah, the other option is what I do where you can actually turn off auto cover in game using one of the hotkeys. So if you want to pull off this play without turning off your auto cover, you can... I, I don't know the letter because I changed it, but check your controls. You can turn it off. So Boston coming in with another bombing strike now. Onto the Nostavaki on the flag there. 
not going to quite find the kill, but he was waiting for that bombing strike so he could push forwards with the Oplites and the Field Engineers. Another Yakari just coming in in time from Emil, though, might kind of surprise the Oplites there a little bit. Oplites as yeah, well on the top, going to get the better of the Nostavaki. Boston finally goes down, though. That's a big kill because that thing has been a serious thorn in his side. Although the Tonkin Torunta down south did not get the Sherman kill. The Maori there spotting for it. Uh, and keeping them just out of that 250 meter range. Definitely an issue there. And now the flag back in Yaman's hand here on the hill as he pushes back onto the hill. And there's not much left here from Emil, actually. Yeah, the Sherman just finished off both the T26 and the BA-10M that were next to that Nostavaki that's about to go down. The t 28 is going to go down. The Tankato Yunta are spotted and being killed off. The Yakari getting transport sniped there as well is really, really rough to deal with. Um, that's definitely leaving the mill high and dry on this center hill. ITPSV going after the unit. Now, this thing can kill tanks. Let's be very clear about that. It needs to get in range, but it can shred through armor quite efficiently. Yeah, it's got a 40 mil with 82 rounds per minute with 75 mils of penetration. So things like that Wolverine will certainly be in a bad spot. But I believe this uh, ITPSV has already taken a penetration. So it it's has. only one more shot and that's going to go down. And it does to that Wolverine. Yakari uh, in the transport once again might get sniped. They do another snipe there. Not good news for Mamil. The other Yakari getting surrendered. Things are falling apart in the center here very, very rapidly. Yeah, it loses his Blenheim. It's just kind of like salt on the wound on that one. Uh, 40 mil should help take out this 57 pound uh, mil, 6 pounder. Sherman should be able to kill off that Sherman 3 quite easily. Oh, it does. There we go. Nice kill there. Getting back on it. T uh, talking to Ruta and uh, Yakari should be able to take out the Sherman 3, although he just lost a T26 to another well placed 17 pounder. Very nice indeed. Oh, 17 pound takes out oh, yeah, the T26 there as well. And uh, we see the Yakari Takatu Yenta trying to sneak up on the Sherman, but Yaman not going to let it happen. The Maori already moving down to intercept. We have some oplates moving in there as well. Uh, things back to 1311 for Yaman, uh, but he's going to want to get a move on, make sure that he is ahead in tickets by the end of the game. Yeah, I am surprised we have not seen any of the BT-42s out of Mamil either. It's the 2K HE unit that Hansadi has that's actually really quite effective, only 60 points. He could actually start, you know, ground attacking right in front of some of these 17-pounders and clearing some space for himself. Oh, the Sherman 3. I don't think it's going to get away this time as the Yakari find their Panzerfaust on target. And the Mari will soon follow to the Molotov and SMGs. Uh, so a flag back in favor of Mimel. But the T26 in the middle is going to get taken out by the Sherman 3. Uh, Sturmi is going to try and hold the line. Yakari further up, waiting to ambush the Oplites as they head towards that flag. And they should do just fine doing that. The problem is these 50 millimeter carriers are going to pin all these infantry like instantaneously all the time. Yep. Since they have a 50 cal, they you pin very very fast you see i'm in there actually fire positioning that building to try and pin the yakari but uh, mamel backing off uh, t26 meanwhile on the bottom side actually might be able to take a flag or two here up against these uplights because not too much to stop it other than i guess the 17 pounder uh, yeah. um that's up on the ridge there so maybe not i'm surprised Emil hasn't used his 150 and just kind of bombed that building complex to try to force that flag back in his favor yep and this uh, 150 kind of sitting idle. He has. I don't think he's used it really as much as he could have no. throughout this game. Uh, those 150s can really pack a punch and kind of act like barrage off map um, over time if you put them into the right positions. Yakari in the town goes down, flipping that flag back. The Tonkin Torunta, of course, does not affect the front line. So maybe it'll get lucky and find a Sherman at some point. This leader Sherman would be a great target, but... He's lost that, but Mamil did recapture his flag in the center there, although the push on the central hill from Yaman continuing to develop, and another Shermie here might help the cause. Uh, Sherman should go down to that Shermie. Uh, not if it doesn't hit. Sherman 3 does have three vets, so it's going to have the rate of fire advantage in that situation, but the Sherman 3 does take a penetration. 
and the Sturmian can continue to get his set another shot on target, potentially. <laughs> Not on target. <laughs> Actually misses. <laughs> and now the Sturmian in the town engaging the Wolverine. The Wolverine and Sturmian are going to fire at the same time, but the Sturmian this time gets the kill. Ah. So, there we go. Now... Sturmy bouncing off the Sherman. Bounce. Yeah, this is not. This is wild. This engagement. Go on, Sturmy. You're going to do it. 70, uh, 95. Uh, what are you front doing? Armor. Well, one really cool thing about these uh, Finnish Dukes, as he gets there the kill, is. is that they do have 95 millimeters of frontal armor because in real life they put concrete on the front of their tanks to make them a bit stronger. Now, do they have higher side armor? I was actually just looking at this. I wasn't sure if they did because they have the wood on the side. You'd think maybe they'd have five extra millimeters of side armor, too. I actually don't know. I, I don't think so. No. Yeah. I got to look. I, I kind of wish they did because the visual effect would be really cool. But yes, the extra armor is really nice, honestly, especially when you're fi like fighting that 100 millimeter uh, penetration value. That extra five mi millimeters makes a big difference. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, our plates finding their way through. To a flag there, opening up the salient. Sherman 3 killing off the T26. Going to be looking for the T28 shortly after. Uh, Oplites uh, further down, engaging the Yakari uh, Nostavaki, going to come in with the Molotov to help out. Uh, meanwhile, on the bottom, it looks like the T26 kind of just sitting around the corner enough that the 17 pounder can't quite get line of sight. And it's also the 17 pounder has come off the ridge. I, I think this must be like a. a yeah, I'm in doing a fun funky order there because the Bofiz was on a follow order. He just realized that they're wandering off. That's kind of funny. E28 versus Sherman. Not a good fight here at this range. Oh, but he does bounce the Sherman shell. Kind of surprising. Some of these engagements are so ridiculous. Like, yeah. what we expect to happen just isn't happening. <laughs> no, not at all. T28 now goes down. The T26 could not pick up the side shot, though. It hit two times and didn't pen either time. And now another T26 is not going to change the math, and it goes down. Yep. Takes it out further back. The T26 closer. Not quite doing the job. But uh, Mamel still pushing forwards out in this top side. Two Sherman 3s are slowly moving towards that area to cut off that salient. So still sitting on a 12-12, Mamel... Actually, with a good chance to win this game, we got almost just about 10 minutes left on the clock. And if he can stay ahead in tickets, he will win. Yeah, I mean, Yaman's running out of time. He's got to make... At this point, I think he needs to get some double ticking in. I don't think a single tick will do it. it it'll be really close if it does. So the carrier 50 is still really being annoying for these Yakari. The Yakari, they just want to hide in these town buildings and ambush the uplights when they get close but these carrier 50s are not allowing that to happen ever and that must be so frustrating for Mamil to deal with because he's trying to get T26s forwards to kill them but then the Sherman 3s are right there to bite back yeah that's rough 40 mil does find a 17 pounder so that'll be a nice kill should be able to kill that off I would think especially uncontested like this Yep. There it is. All right. Nice kill there. But oh, you didn't kill it yet. Just kidding. We've seen this <laughs> fail before. He's so far against the Oh, he switched targets. Because the 17 pounder got fully pinned. But yeah. meanwhile, in the top, the Sherman 3s are now just driving across the open, uh, charging towards the lines of Mamel. I think uh, Yamin smells blood a little bit here on the 1410, looking for the 15 9. Probably realized himself. Uh, that he needs to get a bit of a move on. The double Nostavaki that were capturing the flag further up from a mill on the bottom uh, getting forced off as the Sherman 3 comes up now to deal with the T26. That T26 might just back up to another Sherman 3, so uh, things not looking too favorable here for the mill right now. No, he's holding on by the skin of his teeth. Right? Yakari, though, could kill this Sherman 3 that's pushing up into the north. That would be pretty huge. Because it looks like the Sherman 3 is stopping, so the Akari should be able to kill that pretty easily. Uh, we do, after all this time, finally see Ahsoka 85, a T-34 85 come in. The Akari sneaking up. And going to take the shot and do find the kill onto the Sherman 3. So punished for going too deep. But uh, yeah, the Ahsoka 85, yeah, as you mentioned, will deal with these uh, Shermans quite nicely. There's also a 50mm AT gun coming in as well. Uh, but I think Yamin will have enough infantry to 
be able to stay close and that will cause this uh, T-34-85 to be in trouble, especially against like the AT gun and the Sherman 3 looking for the side shots there. Yeah, and these Yakati trying to push down onto this central flag a little bit here. That's a good play, definitely an alternative. Sherman 3 up north goes down to the Soka and the 50 mil uh, combo, but the Pac-38 left its APCR on, so the Staghound's going to limp away after getting hit with the APCR. T-26 in a fun position, though, too. Cut off a little bit here. Uh, the 6-pounder should... Well, if it gets APCR, it'll kill it just fine. It will struggle against the 85 at range. Although, yeah, it should... I think so. Yeah, it's gonna just... <laughs> oh, just kidding. Why do I even speak? <laughs> I know. <laughs> I was just about to say about the word bounce. <laughs> yeah. And then it's like straight through the front armor. No yeah. worries whatsoever. Oh, and a shooter knock just to boot as well. Why not? Um, on this bottom side, Sturmy actually trying to go aggressive here, try and create a little bit of a salient. Um, Taka and Puya might actually kill the uplights in their transport. No, they don't. Um, but the Sturmi and the Taka and Puya together will certainly start to do damage. Um, the 150 currently targeting the Bofors and the 17 pounder up on the ridge. Now we've got Boston actually coming in for the Taka and Puya there. But we are up to 16 8 now for Yamin. And he's going to be hoping that this is enough to get him ahead on to get some time. Yeah, things collapse in here a bit from Emil. There's six and a half minutes left. T26 can't seem to kill the Oplites. Oh no! And the Oplites get out of transport just in time. Taka and Poya gets bombed and killed. Uh, another loss of a resource there. Back to a 15-9. I mean, if he can get back to a single tick, he. I think Yaman still wins. I mean, Emil still wins this, but double tick, I don't think that's good. Yeah, just the disparity of units across the map right now, especially when it's like slow T26s crawling in is uh, pretty bad. We also see the BT-42 now coming in as well to help support on this top side. So I think the support, the, the top side here for Mimel is actually just looking pretty scary. Uh, he could potentially break out of these tree lines and capture himself back a couple of flags because between the BT-42 and the T-3485, they can probably kill the six pounder. The Staghound won't be a problem as long as the T-34 stays alive. Uh, on the bottom side, meanwhile, Sturmy did just take out the Sherman 3. So... There are opportunities here for Mimel to capture back some flags. He's got to do it quick, though. Uh, the, 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 the gap is closing, and he's got to close it before a single tick will get will close it the rest of the way. Transport snipes don't help as y Yamin once again kills another infantry of Mimel in a transport. Now, it's something that has been consistent in this game, and honestly has cost Mimel quite a bit. Six pounder finishes off the Sturmy on the bottom side and now things looking much worse. Yeah, Mimil just a l way too aggressive with his infantry call, with his transport call uh, which is not like him. I just feel like he calls stuff in and he stops paying attention to it and it's like yep, by the time that up. unit gets there, it's like the line is like a mile deeper. Yeah, so the Sturmy actually up on the ridge I think got killed by the six pounder as well. So, it um, did. Yeah, two Sturmies dead on the bottom side. He just got transport sniped again. The T26 is looking like it's going to go down as well as it gets transmission damage, giving the six pounder enough time to get a second shot off. And uh, yeah, these salients are only getting bigger and bigger. Only on the top side do we really see any sort of chance here as the BT-42 starts firing its HE, but he really should turn off the HE and use those flame shots instead because they are incredibly effective. I always forget you got to turn them off for that to work. It's very strange. Nice because it's just two types of HE ammo, isn't it? It's just you gotta. I guess. Like maybe they should have made it so that they put the flames first. Yeah, that explains why it never seems to do flame stuff for me. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> now yeah, the BT forty two. Um, oh, oh, the six pounder takes out the T34. That's not good because it need, means the Staghound can actually come forward and maybe kill the BT. Although there is still the 50 mil for Mamel. Uh, another T26 on the way there to back things up. So the, the top's still looking okay for Mamel, but the bottom side of the map Collapsing. absolutely collapsed. BT42 the BT back there, yeah, trying to yeah, again, keep things. Again, these units, he should have brought them in 15 minutes ago. Yes, 2k things. Yeah, the BT-42s are are really nice infantry support weapons and you're not to use them throughout this game, particularly when there's something that's like unique to Pansari 
uh, that are very decent is quite weird. Uh, especially with, if you do use their flame shots, the flame shots are still very good. Like three flame shots out of a BT-42 will kill like a Sherman, for example. They, their damage is still ridiculously high, even though it did get oh. nerfed. That's good to know. Yeah, and it's just like it, he he kind of squandered the 2k assets that could have... I mean, second New Zealand doesn't, like we said, doesn't have a ton of 2k stuff. So the fact he didn't take advantage of what he had seems odd. Yeah, and we're just about to see the tickets of... Yeah, I mean, go ahead of Mamel. Mamel's keep dropping very, very rapidly indeed. So looks like this is going to be commiserations to Mamel as he tried his absolute hardest in this game. But as you mentioned, maybe got a little bit too over aggressive uh, with his troop transports and uh, maybe play in general uh, as a lot of units, a lot of mistakes uh, that Yamin kind of forced him to make. Yeah, I, some troop choice call-ins, definitely. Um, you know, and again, I mean, Yaman's fantastic. This is this. It's nothing against Mamil. Mamil's an incredible player as well. But it just kind of felt like Yaman had his number this whole time. Even when Mamil was doing really well, uh, there was just mistakes happening here and there all over the place that rapidly added up into a disadvantage that Mamil couldn't overcome anymore. Absolutely. So... T26 trying to help the Maxim push forwards here. The last hope, but Mamel surrenders. And after 48 minutes and 44 seconds, the Yamin is going to be the victor of the Steel Division League Season 10 Division 1. Congratulations to him. 3 0 in the final. A very convincing. Uh, victory, especially in the first couple games. This one, a much closer Mamil trying his best to hold back the waves, but uh, yeah. Nicely done by Yaman. Yeah, great match. 5,350 kills to 3,955. It felt that way for sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, great game to both players. Really thought Mamil had that one. Uh, just a couple too many. These Sherman 3s were allowed to do too much damage, really, at the end of the day. Um, every Sherman 3 just has a laundry list of kills. And even though they're T26s, that's still... It's a lot of points at the end of the day. Um, and and hard... also, like you said, the, the T34, 85 just weren't there to stop them soon enough when they otherwise could have been. Yeah, he has he has tools to fix that problem, and I just didn't feel like he really used them. So, yeah, it, it happens. It happens to the best of us, and these guys are the best of us, so... Great game to both, great match to both these players, and congratulations to Yaman. All right, well, anything else you'd like to add? Thanks for casting with me as always. It's been fun. Yeah, it's great always to uh, cast with you, Attack Power, and make sure to like and subscribe. There you go, I'll give you one oh, more. Oh, got it. It burns you. It really does burn you. <laughs> uh, thank yes. you very much for joining me, Attack Power. Absolutely, man. That's it for now. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed the finals of the Steel Division League Season 10, Division 1. Thank you very much for watching, and we'll see you next time. Goodbye.